been asked to address the question of whether or not a baby who dies or an infant who dies uh, receives automatically the forgiveness and grace of God and salvation through Jesus Christ. That is a great question and a difficult question for many reasons. Difficult on one level if it's uh, being asked by the family or by grieving parents at a gravesite. Uh, it's a whole nother question, but also a difficult and, and thorny question uh, of theological students who, who debate the, the issue in, in seminary or in, uh, in, in a classroom. Um, I want to give you my conclusion up front. As a pastor and a student of God's Word, I believe that children who do die uh, at a young age, uh, I'm uh, trusting that in God's plan there is provision uh, made that they will receive the grace of God. Um, I can't point to chapter and verse, and those who try uh, to point to a chapter and verse to substantiate that uh, inevitably fall short in proving the case from the text that they point to. And we can look at several of those, and we won't have time to do that here, but um, it is an issue that is related to several other issues in Scripture. For instance, and we'll get to this in our study of the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 5, there's a real problem that, uh, that faces anyone who's going to address this question as it relates to the imputation of sin uh, being a part of the human race through connection to Adam. Uh, as Adam's offspring, the Bible clearly teaches that we have received uh, the guilt and the sin that was brought upon mankind because of Adam and Eve's sin. Um, that has to be dealt with somehow. And the normal course of things in Scripture, uh, certainly from a New Testament perspective, is that I have to trust in Jesus Christ uh, to take care of that problem for me. I have to repent of my sins and, and allow Christ and his work on the cross, a cross to be applied to my account. Of course, uh, someone incapable of that as an infant or a baby or a, a young child uh, certainly doesn't have that uh, opportunity uh, to make that kind of decision, at least from this perspective in this life. We don't see that. So a lot of theories have been posed, but if you're going to take seriously the imputation of sin through Adam, uh, you've at least got to say that the Bible has, uh, has not specifically addressed how that's dealt with. Uh, we will deal with an issue that is, uh, seems related, but it is not precisely equivalent, and that is in Romans chapter 2, and we'll get there soon in our study of Romans, that there are people that uh, may not be exposed to the preaching of the gospel, and God has uh, some very specific things to say about how he deals with them. He does not relieve them from culpability, but it's different than someone who's very young or an infant. Um, that's a whole different scenario. And though it sounds the same, well, if a child is saved uh, as, a, as a six-month-old baby or a two, two-year-old child who dies, then why isn't the person who, who hasn't heard? That's a discussion for another time, and, and a, certainly a, it'll take an hour or so in a sermon to unpack the uh, truth of that uh, response to that question in Romans chapter 2. But suffice it to say, at this point in this vlog, that we're going to have to trust that uh, God is, in his plan, set up some mechanism, some special uh, provision uh, for those who die incapable of faith to apply the work of Christ to them without the normal means of growing up, being confronted with the gospel, and responding with repentance and faith. I know there's a lot of theological issues that connect with this, and I suppose if we had more time, we could get into some of those. But at least for now, to clarify my perspective as a student of God's Word and as a pastor, uh, that I do believe that though we have to read between the lines and assemble an argument from the character of God, uh, I'm trusting that those who die uh, incapable of faith before they reach uh, an age to do so, though they're not innocent because they are born into a, um, a, a human race that has fallen, that God will rectify the situation uh, and will not impute uh, to them a guilt or a punishment that um, you might expect, at least, at least mathematically in the equation of salvation, but that God will supply grace and mercy uh, to deal with that uh, seeming exception to the rule, and uh, we can trust in his good character. And, and if all else fails, at least in our biblical thinking, as it says in the, in the book of Genesis, uh, surely the, the judge of the whole earth uh, will do justly, he'll do right. And uh, we can uh, rest in that. None of us are going to sit on the other side of this life saying, well, that really wasn't right, and God didn't really do the right thing. That's going to be crystal clear. And I think our series that we're uh, building up to here in the book of Romans on uh, sin will help us to clarify that, that God is not uh, some kind of rash or, uh, you know, some kind of, of illogical person to impute punishment.
punishment to sinners uh, and, and to be able to respond to our sin with, with a holy and righteous indignation. Uh, but the point is that, uh, again, back to the bottom line here, there is, I believe, a, a, a relative confidence that we can have in the goodness and grace of God to supply a special, unstated, biblical uh, a, a provision for the salvation of those who die uh, before they are capable of comprehending the gospel or faith.